Hi, we're here to talk about ecosystem styling for tables of all kinds. Dealing with tables in the ecosystem is pretty straightforward thanks to content templates, which we'll get to in a second. The templates for these tables are so great because they provide an easy way for you to build tables that are automatically accessible and responsive. So let me enter the edit mode to show you that if you choose the content templates button here from the Drupal toolbar, click on it, you'll see the list of available table styles. They're right up here near the top. Checklist table, data table, left column header only, data table, top row and left column headers, data table, top row header only. That might seem like a lot of variation on the basic table format, but there are reasons for this. One reason is flexibility. You might, for ease of communication, want to display data in a particular format, so we've offered some options. Also, we have a couple of different table types that require semantic naming because we want all tables of some particular types to look the same way in all courses that use the same style sheet. That's because we want to be able to make one change to the style sheet and have it affect all the pages in every course that corresponds to that style sheet. So if we want to change all the checklist tables throughout the entire ESP program to look the same way, we can do so easily and efficiently by changing the style sheet once instead of changing each table in each course individually. All right, so let's get down to it. I'll go back to the view mode and show you some examples of the four table styles that we saw in the content templates list. So here's the checklist table. This is the kind of table you might see at the start of a lesson, and it provides students with a list of activities for that lesson and some directions for those activities. The header is at the top, and the rows are highlighted as you scroll over them. This is one of those tables that we might want to have look a particular way for every course in a particular program. The other three table choices you'll find in the content templates list are all data tables. You can choose which style fits your particular needs, and you might use any or all three of these styles in any given course. A top row header only table uh, is a data table with a header at the top. Like the checklist table, it also has the feature that shows highlighting when you hover over the rows. But in addition, it always displays these, this zebra striping. Top row and left column header table is another style of data table with headers here and here, as is the left column header only table. Just different formats to give you lots of options. All right, before we move on, I want to show you that there's a fourth table we haven't mentioned. That's the schedule table, and it's for use only in the syllabus of your course. So it's not a choice within that templates list that we looked at. As you can see, this table lays out a whole course schedule in a comprehensive format. So work with your learning designer to effectively utilize this table in your own syllabus. All right, the last thing we're going to do is add a data table so you can see how this works. So I'm going to go into the edit mode, and then I'm going to come down into the edit window here and put my cursor where I would like to add a table. I'm going to add one here, top row, header only. So I put my cursor right there, click the content templates button, pick the data table, top row, header only choice, and see how that quickly popped up. There's a little template there. Now this little table can be expanded or decreased on the fly. I can uh, click here at right click anywhere here and add a column before or after the existing the column that I'm in or a row before or after the row that I'm in. I'm actually going to delete this column so that I have two and make this into a table real quickly. So I'll add heading tab over and add another heading and then oops, add some data now I'm going to add a couple of rows so I right click choose row insert row after I'm going to do it again row, insert row after, add some more data, use my tab key or my arrow keys on my keyboard. Let's 
add natural gas, add 16%, then quickly I'll give it a caption. Table 4.1, sources of methane by process. That'll do it. Okay, so here's a little table, all done, pretty quick and easy. I just need to save it at the bottom of the page, and you'll see it'll show up. There it is, sources of methane by process. So that's it, it's pretty easy. Um, if you need assistance with anything you've seen here, let us know, and thank you.